Hey everybody, we're going to talk about the lathe and duplicator, um, basically identifying the parts and how we use them in the pen making process here in the Lancer Country Technology Lab. So here we go. The first thing that we're going to look at is just the lathe in a big picture. A uh, lathe is a machine that basically holds any type of material, in this case wood, um, and it's going to rotate it around this horizontal axis. And we're going to use a cutting tool, which we'll talk about in a minute, and shape our our stock, if you will. In this case, again, wood. There's two parts to the lathe that every lathe has. It has a head stock and a tail stock. And I remember that really easy, or the, the easy way I should say I remember that is heads and tails, just like a coin. So the head or the beginning of the lathe is where the motor is. The motor is down here with the belt on it. And then the tail stock is in the back or at the end. So it's pretty simple if you remember heads and tails. The mandrel is the name for this um, bar, this metal bar that is mounted into the headstock. And what that's for is to hold on to the actual uh, stock or pieces of work that we're going to turn. Um, which is the name of, you know, that's what you do on a lathe, you turn your part. Um, so anyway, that's what we're going to use to hold our work pieces or our stock. The duplicator is this whole mount, this whole white platform and everything attached to it. And what that does is helps us to really easily create a pen um, with with students or anybody for that matter that isn't as experienced using a lathe. So for first time users of a lathe, this is a really nice, simple way. So you're you know, you're not you know timid about it. It's it's just a it's a really really shallow learning curve. So you should be able to pick this up really easy. That's why we use the duplicator. Um, there's two other things that we want to look at um, before we get even uh, deeper with details here. The switch is mounted up here. Of course, that turns the motor on and off, and that's in a different location with different lathes. So you got to make sure you know where that is. And then the cutting tool is mounted into this arm right here. Okay. Now, proper setup of the template. This is the template, and that's the metal piece that goes into this holder. It's held down by these screws. And what I want you to know about the template is it's very important we have it mounted correctly. That's why I always ask that you um, confirm the setup with me as your instructor before you actually start turning each day. Um, the reason for that is we want to make sure everything's set up right in a line. So these two lines, um, those yellow lines, illustrate how important it is to have this set up with this flat part. So you can see that that spacer should align with this because this should be aligned with this front part or that front blank and this with the the back one. So that's why we do that. And also notice the setup here with the spacers. There's two spacers here by the headstock, the um, wooden blank here, then we have a spacer in the middle, another blank, and then another spacer, and then the tailstock is moved forward and tightened up so it pushes everything toward the headstock. Now I will help you with the template and I will also help you with the tailstock, so please make sure you don't do that by yourself unless you're told otherwise because I've had very well-intended students um, or well-intending students that just don't exactly do a good job with it. So I always want to make sure that I help you with that. All right, so the way the template works is pretty cool. The um, the follower pin, which is on this, this duplicating arm, it's going to eventually um, ride right along this template. And what that's going to do is it's going to help create what we call that profile or the shape. So it's going to basically, you know, guarantee if everything's set up correctly that you're not going to cut too deep and we get a good consistent profile. So every time that template is mounted into the duplicator, we're going to get the same style or profile pen. Okay, so this is how we're actually going to cut. And we're going to, you know, do a live demonstration in the workshop when you get there. But it's really, really important to remember to see kind of how it works at first. So, of course, we've got our cutter mounted into the duplicating arm. And there's two ways we can move this knob, clockwise and counterclockwise. And I've got a graphic that illustrates that really good. So what you're going to do is you're going to put one hand up on top of the arm. And that's going to keep it from flopping up and down while we're cutting and you're going to put the thumb of that hand right here on the front of this block and so you're going to push forward and then you're going to keep your hand pushing down so it doesn't ride up on us so at the same time you're going to use this knob to help it um, to make sure you maintain um, your depth so if you want the uh, cutter to move away from the stock like this arrow indicates you're going to move the knob to the right whereas if you move it to the left or counterclockwise, then the cutter is going to move in. So that's the difference between 
um, between those two movements. And it's really important that we take very shallow cuts, and we'll talk about that in our cutting right now. <laughs> okay, there's three things in this slide that we're going to talk about, and that's feed rate, pass, and depth of cut. Your feed rate is how fast the cutter moves down the length of your piece. <coughs> Excuse me. So, in other words, um, as, we, as we make a pass, which is a single cutting movement down the length of the stock, each pass needs to be um, a, a smooth and slow feed rate. In different materials, you can move faster than others, but we want to maintain a really nice, smooth, and slow feed rate. So, in other words, we don't want the, the cutter going really fast down there, or we don't want it going, you know, really kind of inconsistent speed. We want it nice and smooth, and we'll, we'll illustrate that as we, um, as we move into the workshop. Now, as you create it, or as you as you make a pass, um, you want to make sure that you don't make too deep of a cut. Your depth of cut of, is, of course, how deep that we move the cutter into the stock on each pass. You want to move it very little, or, or a little bit at a time, I should say, to make sure that we're not taking too much off. So in this picture right here, this is way too far in. This isn't even rounded yet. We haven't even cut this. So just for illustration, when I took this picture, we move this all the way in. You do not want it that. You barely want it touching the workpiece. So when we start it, the machine, the cutter is going to be back here, and then we're going to use that knob to move it in slowly. So we're just cutting the edge of it, and then we're going to take more off and more off and deeper and deeper until we get this nice and round. And then, of course, we'll, we'll keep cutting until that follower pin helps cut our templates. So really important to remember that. Okay. So once you're done with your actual cutting, then you're going to move into the sanding uh, stage. So we have, we're going to start with our sandpaper. And what you need to remember about sandpaper is the lower the grit number, in this case we're going to start with 150, the more material that the sandpaper removes. So that's a very rough grit paper. And what you're going to do is you're going to move to the next grit when the pen is smooth. So once your pen is smooth with the 150 grit, we're going to sand again with the 240. Once that's smooth, two, uh, 320 and so on and so forth until you finish with the 600 grit. Now that's not a two minute process. It's going to take a little bit of time to sand it, so don't be in a rush. Now once that's all done, then we're going to finish sanding with the sanding pad. And the sanding pad is a super smooth, in this case 2000 grit, which is used to do the final sanding before applying finish. Um, it almost, and you're going to use the gray side by the way, not the red side, it's almost like there's no, um, like there's almost no abrasive on it compared to the 150. So it doesn't even feel like sandpaper, but trust me, it's a very, very fine abrasive um, pad and it's going to make your pen super smooth. Then we're going to get into the finish of your pen. Now applying a finish is important because it's going to put a protective coat um, and soak in in the pores of the wood and it's going to make it look pretty, it's going to be shiny and it's going to you know help protect it from dirt in your hands and oil and things like that in your hands. So um, the correct way to hold the rag is on the left. You notice how I have the rag tightly held in my hand. It's not loose. I've got you know I've, I've got actually my finger in there. And I'll show you how to do that when we get to the applying your finish. And of course we're going to apply thin coats. So we want to make sure we do that and let it dry for a few minutes between the coats. But that's the correct way to hold your um, rag. Uh, for applying finish. This is definitely not the right way. This is totally incorrect because your your rag is held loosely and what's going to happen is that when this lathe starts spinning it's it's going to be a huge danger for this to be grabbed by that workpiece and of course the lathe doesn't know any better. It's just going to grab that and the, op, the odds of your hand being brought into the um, workpiece, you know, spinning at a high rate of speed is is very good. So that's obviously going to you know be a potential for injury. So you want to be careful. We don't hold that loosely. We want to hold it tight. Okay. Finally, for our pen assembly. So now that the you know once the finish is applied, it's looking beautiful. Then we're ready to take it off of the lathe and we're going to assemble the pen. In the workshop, you're going to see an assembly of pen diagram, which looks just like this. Now, it's really important to remember that I will assist you in the pen assembly. Please do not take it upon yourself to start assembling the pen because I've had students that have done this before and it just it doesn't work out. Um, and I don't want you to be offended by that, but trust me, it's, it's going to be better if I help you with it because you get a one-shot deal to get all of these pieces put together correctly. Now, you lay out the parts as shown here in this diagram, but what I want you to know about the, 
pen refills, the ink refills, I should say, they are available at any office supply store. You can probably find them online really reasonably uh, priced. Um, you want to look for what we call the cross style pen. So that is the entire process of essentially how we create a, um, a pen, at least the, the basics of it. So um, what you want to do is make sure you're taking good notes. Um, you should be, have a study guide you're going through and taking notes on this video. And then, of course, see your instructor with any questions. And you know, make sure that you remember all this for your test at the end of this unit.